I've been having a few problems with vibrations from the prop motor on this Skywalker model. Um, the vibrations, you can actually hear them, you can hear a humming noise when you run the motor. Quite a low pitched drone. The test jig I've made um, consists of a laser pointer up here, if I turn this on, that shines down into a mirror which is taped onto the motor mount on the Skywalker. The laser reflects off the mirror and shines up onto the wall. Now when I run the motor on the model, you can see that the dot on the wall turns into an oval shape. In fact, in this case, it's more of a horizontal line, but it is actually an oval. But turn the motor off there, you can see we've got a dot. And when we turn the motor on, it turns into a horizontal line. Now, at certain RPMs, the effect goes away. It's certainly not as severe. In fact, you can see that we get horizontal lines at certain RPMs, vertical lines at others, and this this is all down to the um, various modes of oscillation and uh, the resonant frequencies of this motor mount here. Now, in order to find at which position the off-center weighting of this motor is, um, I've constructed a simple stroboscope. So I've put a marker on the on the motor, a little white marker. I've got a few LEDs here, um, a few green LEDs as my strobe. Got a little circuit here with uh, a few NE555 timers and this will flash the LEDs um, for a, a very short uh, time period. In fact it will flash them with quite a high current um, so it's it, this circuit actually makes sure that it doesn't turn them on for too long so it doesn't damage them. Um, and the thing that flashes the LEDs is this little um, little photodiode and whenever the photodiode is exposed to um, to light you can see that we get a little red LED come on here and on the rising edge of that red LED um, there's a little monostable timer which flashes these LEDs here for a fixed um, and short time period so as I expose this to the light, you'll see the red LED comes on and the green LEDs here flash. In fact, yes, yeah, you can just see it there. As I point that, the red LED comes on and the green LEDs flash. The camera doesn't always pick up the flash. There, it's picking it up now. The flash is very, very brief. What I can do with the um, photodiode is to mount this on the wall at a specific position in that oval that gets drawn and that will flash the strobe LEDs at a specific position in the rotational cycle of the motor. So first we turn the motor on, choose an RPM which causes the biggest displacement and then position the photodiode at the edge of the line as close to the edge as possible on this line. Now when I've got this right, I turn this light off here, you'll see that it's just on the very edge and as I just reposition the photodiode we get the flashing strobing effect from the green LEDs. So that's probably a good position for it, just about there. Now, although the LEDs look as if they're on permanently, they're not. They're actually strobing. If I move the camera, you can probably just see that they're strobing there. Now if I take the green LEDs and point them at the motor, you'll see an interesting thing is happening here. Although this motor is rotating, 
the strobing of this LED is making it look as if it's actually stationary. That little white marker I put on there is in a almost fixed position. And the rest, there's no more white markers on there that we can see. There's just one and one almost fixed location, which is approximately at nine o'clock. So if I stop the motor there and turn on the lights, I've now repositioned the motor so that the white marker is approximately lined up with where it appeared to be when the strobing was happening. For the strobe lights to be flashing at this point, the laser on the wall must have just been passing the the uh, photodiode and creating a rising edge at precisely this position. If I apply a slight rotational force to this shaft we can find the position at which the uh, we can find the, the, the direction of the force which causes the LEDs to flash and I've put the LEDs below here and I'll apply the rotational force in the same directions as the in the, uh, rotating around in the same direction as the motor turns so that's clockwise so as I go around clockwise you can see it's a pos certain position which is just there so that is actually in that sort of if we look at from the back of the model that is in that sort of a direction as I apply the force in that direction just there like that so that's what causes those LEDs to flash a slight force in that direction. Now what is this trying to tell us? Well we know that the motor is not running balanced so that means that the center of mass of the motor is not precisely lined up with the center of rotation of the motor. Now as the force that we need to apply in order to cause the LEDs to flash is in this direction, it must mean that the center of mass of this motor is somewhere slightly down here below the shaft. So to make an, a correction for that we need to apply a small amount of weight to this side of the motor. And to do that I'm going to put a little bit of tape on there. So somewhere around this location here. Stick that down. Now if I run the motor again with the tape applied You get the line on the wall. The LEDs you need a slight amount of adjustment on the photo diode here to uh, get the LEDs to be flashing correctly. There we go, LEDs are strobing. And let's shine this, the LEDs onto the motor shaft again. And we've moved now. Get your position, get your angle here has changed slightly. I would say that's now at about somewhere between seven and eight o'clock. So I'll stop the motor, turn on the lights, and reposition this. 
It's about there-ish. Now doing the same thing again, I'll apply that small rotational force, or small um, tangential force to the shaft, and we'll see when the LEDs flash. Same sort of angle, so that means a little bit of tape needs to be applied to this side here, which is about in the same place. edge of there. Now, I'll spin this up. Ah, now straight away this is sounding a little bit different. Reposition, reposition the photodiode slightly. bit more difficult to achieve this now. Turn the lights off. And we're about in the same place again. So it's nine o'clock. Oh, it's a little bit intermittent. It's about nine o'clock-ish. A little bit more tape. Well, I've repeated the taping process over and over, and eventually I got to this amount of tape. There's about, uh, to guess, about 10 to 15 pieces of tape there. Um, then the motor ran quite smoothly. Um, there was no buzzing or, or shaking. But the moment I ran the motor up to any kind of speed, the piece of tape flew off. And there's no way that that amount of tape could stay stuck to the side of the motor. So I've got no choice here, and I've had to grind using um, a grinding tool. It doesn't look pretty, but I've had to grind a quite a substantial amount out of the side of the motor. If I can get to the right angle here, you can see the depth of this hole. In fact, I think I've ground out that much that I've gone into the back of one of the magnets inside there. Um, that was quite surprising. It doesn't look pretty, but now if you listen... It is absolutely smooth. The motor just purrs around. No sign of off balance on that and I can't detect any um, out of balance problems using the laser either so that just shows how far out this motor was the amount of material that I've removed from that slot there I suppose that's what you get with cheap motors